Hey there, this is Aaron with Simplesix.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up Authorize.net as a credit card gateway, um, as a way to take payments in your Simplesix site. We don't recommend it as being the best solution, though. We believe that um, Square is the best solution. The reason why Square is the best solution is um, there's so many solutions. The, the main re reason why is um, the credit card transaction processing fees. If you ever do a refund, Square is going to refund their fees as well, too. So if you're using Stripe, PayPal, or Authorize.net, or any other gateway, if you ever do a refund, they're not going to refund their original service fee, and you might get hit with a transaction fee for the refund, too. That's possible. Um, but you're definitely not going to get your refund on when you refund that back. That service fee, it's gone forever. Um, the other thing that's nice about Square is we're going to be developing a new attendee app. Um, right now, it's September 1st today. By mid-September, um, it's going to be available. And by late September, it's going to have the ability for attendees to add additional tickets to their orders. So attendees can use our new uh, mobile app to view their e-tickets, save it to their passbook, and if they want to add additional tickets or order or buy tickets for your next event, they can do it directly on the attendee app um, when they use um, Square. And um, so there's a lot of reasons why you'd want to use Square, but if you want to use Authorize.net, we fully support it at Simple6. Um, we're fully author integrated with Authorize.net. So for credit card charges, they work. Um, if you want to do a refund, they also work with Authorize.net within the Simple6 platform. And if you ever want to cancel an order um, on the same business day, we're integrated with Authorize.net for, for doing something special called a void, which means when you void that order, I believe you don't get hit with the full transaction processing fee, the credit card fee. You just get paid. You might have to pay like a 30 cent fee, but you don't have to pay for the you don't have to pay for the whole like 2.9 percent. You don't have to pay for that if you do a same day void. All right, so let's dive in. So I will um, show you the back end of a simple text site where we're about to integrate with Authorize.net. So I can see here that they haven't turned on any gateways because they all say connect, and none of them have that dark blue border around it. Um, so Authorize.net, I'll click here to do that. And since we're logging into the real Authorize.net account, a lot of things will be like um, blurry. So just apologize for the blurriness, but just for security's sake. Um, so I'm going to jump straight into the Authorize.net account. So basically, you'd log in. I honestly don't know how I found this page. I had to click a million links to get to here, but this exact URL, um, you can see it right here. It's all right. So the very first step here is um, they don't have any API key. So I guess we want to um, get a new transaction key. So I'll click that. Then I'll click submit. And um, it's going to send them a pin. So this is my client here. So basically she's going to get um, a pin number request to make sure that it's her. So I'm going to email that person in a few seconds and say, hey, did you get that pin? Um, once I have that pin, I'll put it in here. So I just got that from my colleague, and I copied that in, and I pasted it, and now I have access to view um, my current login ID and a transaction key. So it says current. I think it actually just created it, and now it's current. It wasn't like previously available. Um, so right here, I have it on my screen. I'm going to go ahead and copy it, and now I'm going to paste that into Civil6 on the back end. So here I have the API login. I'm going to paste that in. And now I'm going to grab this transaction key, and I'm going to click the Copy to Clipboard option here. And I'm going to paste that in as well, too. So now that's set up. So let's do a test order to make sure everything's working OK. OK, so I just made an event that has um, one ticket type for a dollar and a service fee, and I made a test order with my credit card. And here's the order complete page um, on my screen that shows the order was complete. And on the back end of the Simple Six site, I can also look at that order. And if I'm curious about the transaction details, I can always click transaction details and view all the transaction numbers. Um, so if I was logged into my authorized.net account, I could verify them as well, too. And let me show you how to do that. So if you're logged into your authorized.net account, you can go to transaction search. Now, your unsettled transactions will be in your current batch. Normally, you set your batch, um, the default will be midnight each night. So 11.59 p.m. and 59 seconds um, is when your batch closes. Um, so pretty much every day is its own batch. Um, that's, a, that's the default that most people do. It's the best way to keep that as well that way, too. Um, as I mentioned earlier in our video, if you do um, a, a void of an order or a refund of an order in the same batch, it'll be a void and there, you don't get hit with the credit card transaction processing fee, which is kind of nice. Um, but let's dive in. So here we have our unsettled transactions in front of me here. And um, there's two in here, declined. That's because I was testing this earlier and I, had, I ran into an issue earlier today. Um, but this second one right here, um, that's my checkout that I just did. 
and I can see that everything went through A-OK. -okay. There's no problems at all. Um, so I can see it all right there. And now if I want to cancel this transaction or do a refund, let me show you how to do that. Um, so in the back end of your SimpleTix site, you can go over to Action, and it says Void Transaction, like I mentioned a few times now. If it's the same um, day as the transaction, the same calendar day, you're not going to get an option to do a refund. Instead, your only option is to do a full void. If you need to do a partial refund, um, if you're using authorized.net, you'll have to wait till the following business day. So let's say you paid $100 and you want to do a partial refund of $50. You're going to have to wait till the next business day because that batch has to get closed. And then the following business day, you can give them the, the partial refund. Um, but since it's the same business day, um, I'll click the option right here to do a void. And now this is completely voided. Um, if I go to the back end of authorized.net, and pretty much hit refresh here, I can see that last transaction, it was voided here. So always do any kind of void on the SimpleTix side, not on authorized.net, and also any kind of a refund or partial refund, also do it in the back end of SimpleTix, not on authorized.net, because we're fully integrated. All right, well, thanks for watching our video today on how to integrate authorized.net into your SimpleTix site. Thank you.